Okay, so here's a video on how to draft a conclusion for this level three experiment. Uh, it, it was the pendulum, and you hopefully are already up to this stage where you have a graph like this with your line of best fit equation, with your error line and your error lines equation. So if you've gotten this far, you're ready to write a conclusion. Just a little word of warning, your error lines equation is not needed to pass, but your error line is needed to pass. So back to the instructions. The instructions are this one here. Now below all of this are the actual instructions that few students actually read, frighteningly, and it tells you what you need to do. So once you get all the way through here, eventually you get to these two bullet points. These are the two bullet points about the conclusion. So you can pause that and have a look. There's a few dangerous things in here. One of which is you have to make a comparison between what your equation come out, came out with and what you expected because of the theoretical equation. That comparison is needed to pass. So that's different than level two. Now this is what we mean. So we'll go to this file over here. Just a little reminder, from our graph, we have these two formulas, okay? Remember, the bottom formula is not needed to pass. So for a while, we're not going to worry about the bottom formula. The top formula, you need that one. The title of the standard is you actually carry out this thing to test a theory relating how two things fit together, okay? So you found your formula based on your data that's this formula up here okay the instructions again the first set of instructions about the conclusion says you need a statement that includes your equation and the relationship between the two variables and you need to compare this with what was predicted okay so the second part is actually a merit level kind of business so first bit for achieved. Basically it starts out like this, where you have the square root of the length is proportional to the period, just like you would have said in level two. And then you slap down your equation, okay? You can say we got it from our data, but it's sort of obvious because where else are you gonna get it from? Now, how to compare it? You need another statement. Here is one of many ways of doing it. You can say our experimental relationship matches the theoretical relationship given by this equation because nothing to do with your gradient of 1.9, although that helps, but it's actually more because you graphed t versus the square root of l and your dots were a nice, happy, straight line. If your dots were not in a straight line, you would not have a square root relationship, okay? And if that happens, you better talk about that, or better fix it. Otherwise, no matter how you write it up, you're probably not going to pass. So that's your achievement level conclusion, right there. That's all you need to say, okay? Most kids do the top part, they forget to do the bottom part, and they cannot pass. So be very, very clear on the two parts of this achieved level conclusion. All right, so that's achieved. Now, here we go. For merit, back to these instructions. For merit, we need to include some uncertainties. Now, how that shows up is this. What we do is we use the two gradients of this graph. The two gradients of this graph, we subtract them. And we end up with an uncertainty for our gradient in our line of best fit, okay? So you just subtract them. You don't care which is the larger or smaller. You just want the difference. So it doesn't matter the order. The vast majority of people in the world, they round this off to one significant figure. So instead of 0.34, you just round it off to 0.3. There is a little bit of worry here. You wouldn't want to round it off to more than a whole number, okay? So. Anyway, eventually you get to rewrite your line of best fit. And our line of best fit now 
can include this uncertainty. Basically, how good is our gradient on our line of best fit? It's 1.9 plus or minus 0.3. I've also rounded off the back number so it can have the same number of significant figures. All right. You could play around with this and round it off more, but you probably don't want to do too much of extreme rounding. Now, how you turn this into a conclusion for merit. Starts up exactly the same way. The only difference is we've now included our uncertainty on our gradient, which was the subtraction of the two gradients of the two lines on our graph. Second sentence pretty much starts out the same way. We have our experiment matches the theoretical gradient, blah, blah, blah. But then we have a calculated theoretical gradient. Okay, so you're comparing yours to the theoretical, which is 2.006. And here's our blunt comparison. We have ours is 1.9 plus or minus 0.3, and that's 18%. You find that 18% with the unrounded values of this number divided by this number and then multiplied by 100. So it comes out to 18% in this case. This gives a range, instead of 1.9, you can say it gives a range of 1.6 to 2.2. You find that by adding and subtracting your uncertainty to the number. You can say if that includes your theoretical, which was 2.06, and you can also even go and say our gradient of 1.9 is only 5% off of the expected value. You get this 5% by subtracting the theoretical, the experimental, and then dividing that by the theoretical. Okay? So, some people consider this last part optional, but it can be really helpful. So we're using uncertainties to compare our results to the theoretical expected results. Finally, you probably want to finish off your merit level conclusion with a statement like this, okay? Now, in this case, with only being 5% off, with the expected 2.006 sitting pretty much right in the middle of our range, okay? With our original uncertainty being less than 20%. All of that together means we probably have high validity in our results, okay? Some issues still exist because having an uncertainty of 18% is considered sort of high. But our expected being only 5% off of what it should have been is a nice thing, okay? There are other results that would lead to some validity. There are other results that would lead to low validity. If your dots didn't even make up a straight line, that's a whole different problem, okay? But for this experiment, this would be a merit level conclusion. And I should say that your conclusion has to match your data, which makes your graph. So it all boils down to the data that you made. Here's our data back here. It all boils down to the data that you got and the graph you made and the lines that went with that data and the size of the error bars that went with that so that you determined where your error line could be and how different your error line is than your line of best fit so that when you actually start writing your conclusion, it matters if your dots are in a straight line. It matters how close your gradient is to the expected gradient. It matters how far apart your line of best fit and error line were. So when you do the subtraction, that matters, okay? So the merit level conclusion has a lot more in it than most people realize. The only two bits of instructions for the merit level conclusion are these two here. All right, the top one is achieved, the bottom one is the merit parts. Okay, there is a whole other ball of wax to get excellence, but you need to get this far to get merit.